Hello everyone, this is Tony and welcome to chapter 3. And before we get started, I want to show you something. If you go to my YouTube channel here and click this link to my website, you will come here, my Facebook page. And as you can see, I have a custom landing page. Pretty cool, eh? So you can see uh, some of my work here, a stupid picture of me. And don't forget to click the like button. Anyway, let's see what we have here. Over here you can see some tabs. And these tabs store information about me. Or to whoever this page belongs to. In this case, it is about me. So they store information about me. Now different types of information goes into different tabs. Like uh, my photographs will go to the photo tab. And videos of mine that I upload will go to the video tab. And also, I am not limited to the tabs that are there by default. As you can see, I have created a custom landing page tab named My Site and stored a Flash website in it. So I can create new tabs and store different kind of information in them. Now let's say if I want to uh, put my photographs in the video tab. Now there is a way I can do that, but it's not that straight. But what I can do is take the photographs, make a video or slideshow of the pictures and in store that or upload that video in the video tab. Now why am I talking about this Facebook tabs when this tutorial is about Krakatoa? Well let's say each of your particle has a Facebook profile or a Facebook page. Now these tabs in this Facebook profile of your particle are similar to the channels associated with the particles. And different types of channels store different kind of information just as these tabs and information from one channel can be transferred to another channel some uh, can be transferred directly some need some manipulation and the only way we can manipulate that uh, as of now is by using the magma flow now just as this uh, Facebook tabs you are not also limited to the number of channels associated with particles you can create new channels and store different kind of data in them now let's jump over to Krakatoa and let's see what these channels store and how we can modify those those channels using magma flow this is a file I created earlier and here we have about 4 million particles and these particles were saved and loaded back in using PRT loader and these are just particles uh, which are driven by a fume effects simulation so I will apply a Krakato channels modifier to these particles and using the magma flow editor I will manipulate the data stored in the channels associated with these particles. Now by default the output of this KCM is set to display the color information associated with each particle but since I didn't save any color channel while casting these particles it doesn't have any so I will put some data manually in the color channel and that will show up in the viewport. A color channel requires three values one for each of the color components such as red, green and blue. Now a vector in a three-dimensional space has three components too. The X, the Y and the Z. And these components can be fed to the red, green and blue channels respectively. So by changing the input type to value and that value to be a vector quantity, we can manually assign a color to these particles. Now I can either dial in the red, green and blue values separately or use the color selector to assign a color to these particles. Now velocity is also a vector quantity and hence it can be directly fed into the color channel and since I did save the velocity channel while casting these particles I can make magma flow read the value stored in the velocity channel and feed that into the color channel. This way we can have a visual representation of velocity in terms of colors. As you can see here, the particles have acquired a color based on their speed and direction of motion. Red, green and blue particles have a major motion component along X, Y and Z axis respectively. And their complementary colors such as cyan, yellow and magenta represent their motion in negative direction of the corresponding axis. The intensity of these particles represent the speed at which they are moving. But as you can see here, the colors are clamped at their maximum value and there is no smooth transition among them. This eliminates the possibility of visualizing the variation in their speed. The reason for this is the spinners that control the color component value ranges from 0 to 1 and in most cases the velocity of a particle is way above 1 
making the colors clamped at 1 always. So by reducing the velocity, we can have smooth transition among the colors, thus visualizing the magnitude of the, velo magnitude of the velocity along with the direction of motion. So we will reduce the velocity before feeding it to the color channel and I will just multiply it with a very small decimal number here. You can get a multiply node from the arithmetic header and a float from the input header. I'll set the float value to 0 0.02 and now you can see there is smooth transition among colors. Color with higher intensity represent particle at high speed and lower intensity represent lower speed and the colors are according to the axis of motion as I said before. You can increase or decrease the maximum intensity of the particles according to velocity by uh, changing the float value here. There are some native pflow channels that are supported by Krakatoa and can be directly manipulated using KCM. For example, the default by default the particles store position channel data and we can directly access it by magma flow. Now since position is also a vector quantity, we can directly feed it into the color channel and visualize the position of the particles in terms of color. So let's do that. We will select the position channel as the input node and feed this to the color channel. And you can see here, the position data is being represented as color. Now let's do some more interesting stuff. We'll use a color gradient to represent the speed or magnitude of the velocity of particles. What I mean is, let's take two colors, for example, orange and green, and use the velocity as the blending factor between the two. So that particles with highest speed will have one color and those with lowest speed will acquire the other. And particles with speeds in between will have a color which is a blend of the two colors. So let's apply a KCM to these particles and before we build our flow, let's plan what we are going to do. We will use the velocity magnitude which is a positive numeric value as the blending factor between the two colors and feed the resulting color to the output node which is a channel node with color output. Now since the velocity is always a higher value we will multiply some decimal number to reduce it before using. So we will read the velocity channel and multiply it with a decimal value, let's say 0 0.03. Then we will calculate the magnitude of the resulting vector using a magnitude operator and use this positive numeric value as our blending factor. Now the easiest way to define two colors that we need here is by creating two vector nodes. So we'll just use two vector nodes to represent our two colors that we will blend using a blending uh, blend operator and our velocity as a blending factor and feed this to the output uh, node which is a color channel node and that will be shown in the viewport. So as you can see particles with higher velocity are more redis and those with lower velocity or lower speed in this case are more greenish. Now let's say we want to use the existing color of these particles and not this gradient. We just want these particles to appear brighter when they have high speed and low intense when they slow down without affecting the color hue. So what you can do is we can simply delete the blend operator and the two colors we have defined here and read the data from the existing color channel. Then we'll multiply it with the magnitude of the velocity and feed it, feed it back to the color channel. But since I didn't save any color channel while casting these particles we don't have any valid color value. So I will just 
I use a vector to manually set a color and multiply this with the velocity and this is what we get Now let's have a look at another example. Let's say we want to affect the particle's intensity with respect to its speed along a specific axis. So what you have to do is only read the component of the velocity vector which is along the axis we want to use. Okay, let me make it easier to understand. Each vector in the 3D space has three components, one along each axis. So if we want to use a specific axis, we have to read the component of that vector along that axis. So this is how we are going to do it. We will calculate the absolute value of the velocity vector. This way we will have only positive values. Then we will reduce the value as we always do by multiplying it with a lower decimal number. And now we will use a two scalar operator and this will let us read the scalar component which is a numeric value along a specific axis. The integer value of one represent x component 2 y 3 z and then we will multiply this value with an existing color channel if we have but since we don't have it we will set uh, a color manually and multiply this to that value. and feed this to the output channel which is a color channel and we can see that in our viewport. Right now the intensity of the particles vary with respect to their velocity along x-axis. and if we change the integer value to 2 the intensity will vary with respect to y-axis and changing it to 3 will affect along z-axis I'll be uploading the second part of this tutorial soon. Until then, keep your creative mind.